Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing The Magnificent, which is new from a port of games. We've done things like Avenue and Santa Maria in the past. This is coming out for Essence Spiel 2019 and you can pick it up there. I assume it will be released shortly afterwards, as games tend to be. So in this game, we are traveling magicians, a traveling troop of magicians, well, competing troops, and we will be trying to expand our camps. We will be traveling around and ultimately performing our magic shows, all in an effort to sell the most tickets, which is the most points, basically. So I am playing a two-player game today against Little Glass Marty. Where is he? There we go. I don't want to accuse him of anything, but I think real Marty knocked him off. Anyway, yeah, I'm playing a two-player game. There are some adjustments. There are fewer dice available, but you will get the idea if you are looking to play this with more players. I would recommend you turn on Klingon subtitles. You will be notified of any mistakes I might have made. Let me know if you find any that aren't on there. And there is a dynamic handheld camera and a static camera. You can choose between those in the descriptions as well. Let's get started. So I am the first player. My top hat is further up on the perform track. And so on my turn, I need to select a dice from the pool and then I perform an action with that die. I also have these master cards here. Now we have numbered player boards. So I have the number one player board and that determines the cards that I start with. And I had a choice of trainer tiles. We had a choice of three and we pick one each. There are different setups. You can have alternate sides of the boards and everything. I'm just going with the standard basic setup for this video though. So I have these master cards and I'll be taking a die and putting it on one of these four. So I'll take four dice per round. There are three rounds in the game. Each of these master cards has an ability that I can activate at some point during that turn. So I can, you know, set a die to any number, increase the value of the die by one, because the more, the higher the number is, the more power you will get, the better action you will get as well. But there is a cost for getting high value dice. So it balances itself out that way. I feel though that I am in the mood for a decent action. I'm going to start off with orange over here. I'm going to grab this five. And so it needs to come on one of my cards. Now, setting it to every number, I'm kind of happy with the number that it's at. I think I'm going to put it on here, which means that I get myself one coin. I start the game with five. Everybody starts the game with six. But at the end of setup, the start player needs to give a coin to the last player. So that's how uh, that's how the start player thing is balanced out. So I've got my coin and now I have three options. I can build in the camp, I can travel, or I can perform. Now performing, you're not going to do first because you need to have a matching poster and tent. You do start off with a poster and a tent pre-printed on your board. But to be able to perform and score these posters, you need to have matching shapes in your camp. Obviously on your very first turn, you won't have that down. So I'm going to either be traveling, which is used to get more tents, get these gems that can be used to alter dice and earn some money if you get loads of them. And later on, posters once those um, spaces are revealed. But what I'm going to do first is expand my camp. Now, one thing that you can do with these gems that we'll be getting is increase the power of your dice. Each gem that you spend increases that power by two. Now you have to spend the correct color, so I'll be spending an orange gem here to increase the value of my orange die by two. So I now have power seven. And one of the benefits this is, not just that you're getting to do a more powerful action, but when it comes to paying for these dice at the end of the round, this plus two, you know, isn't counted. So I'm not gonna have to pay two extra coins for this power that I've used. So that's spent and can go back into the supply. This lovely tray comes with the game, by the way. And so now I can do a build action. And the board tells us about these build actions here. Depending on your power, you have different options to lay tiles on your board. So for power three, you can build a small tile. There are small and large tiles. You are limited by the color of the die that you put down there. There are some things that I can do as well, though. I do have this trainer marker and there are tiles on my board. Not right now, but there will be. And on the main board that I can use my trainer markers on. So I could try and adjust this if I really wanted to. If I really didn't want an orange tile, I could come over to here, for example. Every trainer marker you put here, this means you can put one or more. 
for every one you put here, you can change one of the pieces you'll be taking to a color of your choice and not be restricted by the color of the die that you took. And there are other things to adjust dice to be able to spend money to get posters, things like that. So I could do that if I really didn't want to. These are locked up until the end of the round though. The spaces are cleared and can be used turn by turn, but your actual marker doesn't come back to you until the end of the round. So I don't think I want to do that right away. So I'm limited to orange, which I'm fine with because my poster would like me to have a small orange piece. This T here, the large one would be a bigger rectangle. The small ones always cover four spaces, large ones six spaces. So I can just have one small, one large, or because my value is seven, I can have two small pieces. So I think that's what I'm gonna go for. So I need two of these T's. There we go, and they need to be placed somewhere on my board. Now my first piece can go anywhere I like, Every piece after that has to share at least one square's border with another piece. And I want to cover spaces to get immediate benefits. I can get points, money, trainer markers to be able to you know, use the powers more and more often. And ultimately, I want to cover up areas here for points at the end. Every section, you know, the differently colored sections here, differently shaded sections. Every section that I fill up is worth four points at the end of the game, well, four tickets. So what would I like to do? Now money is always a concern because at the end of the round I'm going to have to pay for the highest value colour that I have. So if I take all oranges that will be 5 and then on the board we've got a 4 and a 2 so 9, 11 money and then I'm going to have another die. If it's a clear die you have to pay for all the clear ones you take. Clear though can be any colour when you take it for an action. So I could be thinking about money because I'm already down for five. Even if I only take this one orange die and I just uh, spread out amongst the colors. I do have six money though. I can get posters as well and gems. Clear gems count as any color. I think let's go in the middle here. Although this could make it harder to fill up in the end, couldn't it? Doing it like this. Let's go for a lot of money. I'm going to go to cover it down here. I'm going to get three money and I haven't covered anything else with that piece. There we go. So that is three more. So what's that, nine now? That's pretty good, isn't it? And then my next piece needs to at least share a border with this piece. I think let's carry on building along the side here and not leave any gaps. So I'm going to get myself a poster. I can either have a poster from the display or from the top of the deck. Now I could go for this poster here. It's the same magician, Sue Hale, the magnificent Sue Hale. And... When this poster is scored, I will get points on it and money. So this poster here will be worth two points when it's scored, and I only need one piece for it. This does need, I've got these two orange T's. It would need a small green as well, and a green and orange gem. I haven't got an orange gem at the moment. But it would score me eight points and get me two money. I think, though, we could go for a little bit easier here. Still needs the green square and then this one would be good to get later i just wouldn't be able to score them all at the same time yeah i think i'm gonna get a slightly easier one considering we're early on in the game we refill the display and so there we go that's my build action i took a die i put it on a mastercard and got the benefit there is a bottom side to all the mastercards that's going to involve scoring at the end of each round that i can be thinking about I chose which option I wanted up to the value of my power, which was seven, because I used a gem to boost it by two. And I put my two pieces down and one of them got, one got me money, one got me a poster. There we go, that's my turn. So now we come over to Marty, who is in a very similar situation. He's got different MasterCards. He's got a different uh, trainer tile there. So what would he like to do? Now, rather than being able to boost any die by one, he can boost purple dice by two. He doesn't need one for his starting poster, though. He wants you know, a big green. So I think... Whoops, no, it's a little mistake. Marty didn't have any gems there. Sorted now. So would he like to travel or would he like to build his camp? I think... Now, he can just spend his starting trainer to boost a die by two, any die. Maybe he wants to wait until later, though, when he's made the numbers a little bit better. I think, now he could take these low purples because he can boost up to value three, couldn't he? That's tempting. So he could boost this one to a three if he did travel. Now travel means you, you 
use the color of the die that you were taking for the color of the wagon that you were moving. So he'd move this purple wagon, three spaces, one, two, three. Get himself a purple and an orange gem. That's not an amazing action. He could stop early and get himself a tent, which is good for scoring multiple posters at once because you need a, a pair of poster with a tent underneath it. I think to start with, though, he is just going to go for building his camp and he is going to go purple. He's hoping to save some money. So he grabs a purple one. He's putting it on here to boost its value by two. So he has got a value three action. So for him, unless he wants to spend a gem and then he could build a large piece, he's building a small piece here, a three. He could boost it by two with his trainer, though. And get to build a load of things straight away. Now, for purple, there is a poster that wants a small purple, and then it wants a large green, which is something that Marty wants to do. Oh, does he wait? Maybe he wants to do a large green straight away. And then he could get scoring this, and then he could get that purple. Yeah, he'll do a green first. So I think he's going to grab... Yeah, he's going to take a green die. He's going to grab the four. And it seems a bit of a waste to put it on here to, to change it to any number. But it seems like a waste to use a gem as well because he's not getting the full power out of it. He's going to put it on here anyway to turn it to a number of his choice. So it does mean he's going to have to pay for the value of it. Just dropped it. So it's going to be five, the value for his action, which, what do you know, that's what you need to be able to get a large piece. So he's going to get a large green piece now, the stairs. He can always choose to take you know, the, the smaller value and have the small piece instead, but he is going to go for the large one. So what would he like? He could get himself a poster and a trainer in this corner. That corner, it would just be a trainer. He doesn't have to go in the corners, of course. He could be a bit messier than me, because you only really need to be really neat if you think you're going to cover the whole thing, don't you? You get some points and some money. I think, though, yeah, a poster and a trainer would be quite nice. So he gets himself a trainer from his supply and a poster from the display, and he's going to take that one that needs, uh, it needs no gems. So a purple and a green, and he's halfway there. So he needs to put this under anywhere. And it only really matters for where he wants to put the tent. You will put a tent on one of these spaces and get an immediate benefit. I think he wants... He's going to go for unlocking more trainers, I think. Yeah, that's his job. So he has done the same as me. He only built one thing. He didn't spend any trainers or anything. He didn't earn any money, but he has got himself another poster and a second trainer, which he can start using from next turn. So it's back to me. Now, it's a bit annoying that I didn't get another trainer marker. <laughs> I didn't choose to go over there because my tile needs two trainer markers. So I'll have to get one as soon as I can, really, which means building more things in the camp and filling that up. Now, if I went for orange again, I could take maybe the four. And... You know, I, I would have value nine then. You add up all of your previous dice. I would have value nine for the action, so that's a big and a small piece. They would have to be orange still. And I don't need any large orange pieces for these. What if I just got a small green? And then I could do both of these. Yeah, I kind of wish I put my poster over there now where the trainer tile's going to go. I could do a bit of traveling, though. What if I just took this, uh, this green one? I could take the green one and just get a tent straight away, and it's a really low-value dice in terms of what I'm going to have to pay out at the end of the round. I think I like that idea, so I'm going to grab this green one, and I'm going to do a travel action with it. Where shall I put it? I don't need its value increasing. I don't need its value changing to anything. I could sell a gem for two coins. I need the green. I don't particularly need the purple right now. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I'll get two coins for this purple gem. And then I need to do a green action value one. I'm going to go for travel. So you, for every space that you go over that's got a gem or a poster on it, you get yourself a gem or a poster, as shown on here, the color of the gem that you go over. But I am taking a very, very short trip because you need to stop on the tent spaces. You can choose to stop early, but that's why I took such a low value die because... I just want this tent straight away. So when we come back around now, this is a space where you can just zoom past to get yourself a poster. 
So I am going to take this tent and I put it over any of these spaces on my board and get the benefit from it. I'm tempted to take another trainer marker, even though that's not going to match up underneath my performance. I'm tempted to take another one so that I can get that uh, trainer marker as soon as possible and get the most use out of it. I want to be using it each round. So, yeah, I'm going to get myself a poster and a trainer marker. Oh, we need something in the display for the posters. There is, is there something that's good for me? This could be scored on its own. If I get another green, then I could score this one on its own and then these two as an action together, provided I do a powerful enough perform. But we'll, we'll see performance very soon. So I'm going to put that there so that it lines up nicely and get myself another trainer marker. So one of my two remaining actions, I want to be building in the camp again so I can get the use of this, which is take another large piece when I do a build. So that's it for me. We are going back to Marty, who needs to get a small purple piece. So he's going to need value three for that. Oh, he, he planned this up already, hasn't he? He's taking a value one purple die. And he's placing it on the plus two, making its value three, which means he gets a small purple piece. So I'll grab that. And where does he want to put it? There's not an amazing place for it. Here, though, he could get himself a trainer marker and a clear gem. That's quite good. And surely he can find something to put in here. Now, for one of his scoring cards, he wants a big rectangle of all purples. So. Hopefully you can get something going there. So he needs trainer marker and a crystal. You are limited, by the way, to three of each crystal. If you would get more than that of a color, then you just get a coin instead. You can't choose to get rid of them for coins. It just happens. So Marty's quick turn there. He just does another build. Back to me. And what was I planning? I want a small green piece, don't I? And then I want to do a performance. Yeah, so... The only green die that's available, though, is going to be that six there. So for, in terms of money, that's going to be a bit expensive for me. But I can maybe get a few things out of the build. What do I want? I want a small green. So I would have to boost it to seven so I could get two smalls. Because it seems a bit of a waste getting a six. If you, Oh, no, I can just I could grab the six like this. And then we could have a plus one here. And then I've got value seven. Oh, it's already seven. Because I've, I'm adding the greens together. Oh. So that would put me on eight. Which would mean, why can't I just be on nine? And get a big and a small. So we could, we could put it on here and waste the reroll a bit. Well, not reroll, the change it to any value ability. So then I would have seven. And spending my gem would put me on eight, nine. So with my value 9, I get a large and a small green, unless I want to use the power here, but I don't do it. I want to use this trainer tile over here. Both of my markers go on it. I'm going to get myself another large piece. So that is two large greens and a small one. And that is good because I can score large pieces if I can get enough of them. So that's not particularly good for there, is it? I do have to be touching in some way. We could do something like this. Yeah, the first piece would be there and it would be touching. And then the second piece can go in the corner. I like that. Yeah, let's do that. So I'd get myself two posters, two coins and a gem. And so oh, always forgetting to fill the display of posters. So what would I like if I can get a large orange piece, which isn't a million miles away? This one would be nice, although it needs gems. This one would just need me to get one more small green. And it doesn't need any gems, so I like that part of it. And... Oh, refill. Oh, too big. Perfect. That is absolutely perfect. It does need a green gem, so I'm going to have to do some travelling and get some gems probably next round. But I do like that. And you can... Once you've scored these, we'll rearrange them. We'll see performance very soon, I promise you. <laughs> so, there we go. Oh, we've got another piece to put down. So, do I want it all neat up there? Or do I want to get another benefit right now? Get a gem. Yes, I want another clear gem. Okay then, so at the end of your turn, your trainer markers get taken off the action that they did and get put up near the tent. 
They're still locked up until the end of the round, but anything you took on the main board, for example, is free again for anybody to use after your turn. So I did some building again. Over to Marty for his third action. Okay, Marty wants a tent, so he's going to need to do some traveling. And I think purple is a good way to do it. He's going to grab this purple one. And what would he like? A money or a gem? Clear gem would be nice, I think. I'm going to put it on there. That's his third one. He's going to spend a trainer marker to boost that by two. So the value of his action is two, three, four. And now he's going to move one, two, three, four. So he gets himself a purple gem, an orange gem, and he landed on this tent. So he grabs this. This is going to need him to spend a gem when he performs, but it's going to get him seven points. And when it's going to come down to paying for dice, well, he did take that green five, so he's going to have to pay at least five, but he's doing a very good job at keeping the price low of these purples. Now it comes to my final action, and I want to do some performing. I want to perform twice. I have two posters that I... Oh, I can't, though. Oh, the way they are... Oh, that's frustrating. I only want to perform once then because I only have two of these oranges and that's one, two, three. So I just want to do a basic perform, I think. I could, if I had a trainer marker, I could use a trainer marker to swap my posters around. But the way I've done them. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have put the tent there. I did it so that uh, I would get the trainer marker so I would get an extra tile. But yeah, I, could, I can wait until next round to perform. That's something to think about. And just, you know, stock up for now. I could get some more tents and maybe perform three times at once. I could get some more pieces. Getting value seven. Five. Six, seven. And then another one. I could get myself two more small orange pieces. And then score maybe three of these at once. But you do need a high value in perform. Marty's going to perform in a minute, so you'll get to see what it entails. I think I'm hanging back. Yeah, I'm going to do some more building. So I get value plus one, but I don't really need that. I'm getting five, seven, eight. Now, if I boosted it with my, with, with my clear gems, I could get a big and a small. And that's something to think about because I could score big pieces. Four points for each big piece. Yeah. Do I do that? I could spend two clear gems, though. And just get two big pieces, have a value 12. Ooh. Now, small pieces help me with the performing, don't they? But big pieces would help me scoring right now. Yeah, I'm going to go for... I'm going to go big. I'm going to spend two clear gems. I got myself two big orange rectangles. Now, I am very tempted to just put them up here where they slot in so nicely. But at the same time, I'm worried that a card in future will come out that wants me to have the biggest orange area and I'm breaking up my orange area. I think it's going to be okay, though. This is nice and neat. So this gets me a trainer marker, which I could use. I might as well before the round's out. So I'll put that there. And then we could just keep going. Yeah, I'm going to get a clear gem back. Is there anything I'd like to do? I don't think there really is. I could swap around my posters for a trainer marker. That's only for building. I could spend two money to get another poster. I'm full up with posters, though. That's going the opposite way on one of the tracks. That is when you take a die, immediately flip it over. Yeah, I, I haven't really got a use for this. But hey, I'm going to have three next round, so that is a good thing, I think. So that is how my camp is looking. Quite good, I think. And we go over to Marty's last turn. He is going to perform. So he is ready, I think, for... Oh, he isn't ready to do two. So he could just do a really cheap perform. Because he's only got one big green piece, hasn't he? Yeah, I am thinking now, is it better for him in terms of points to just go and get another tent? And then he can score this card, which is worth um, five points for an extra tent. But for the purposes of showing you performing, he will show you performing. So... He could take an orange, actually, just to be cheap. Because he could get a really powerful performer if he took another purple. He could take a clear, but you have to pay for every clear you take, regardless of that that's in addition to, you know, your highest colours total. So he's going to take an orange. 
because what he's going to have to pay is his highest color total is five for green. He hasn't really earned much money, has he? He's, he hasn't earned any. So it's a good job he's gone cheap. So he's going to take this orange four. He's going to perform. Now, performing doesn't care about the color of dice that you took. It does in terms of working out your total, but for the action itself, you just take your top hat and move to the value that you're taking. So Marcy has power four, and this tells you you can perform once. So you need to select a pair of a poster and a tent and score it. If you've satisfied the criteria, you can you have the pieces in your camp and you can pay for the gems. So this doesn't have a gem cost, and Marty does have those two pieces in his camp, so he can score the better one. He could choose to score the worst one and get a coin, but I don't think he needs it. So he's going to score this one. He's going to perform. The Magnificent Larissa is going to perform, I should say. And she is going to draw in five cash-paying audiences audience members and so marty is going to get five points no money to speak of there this gets kept face down because mastercards might reference uh, the posters that you have completed underneath as well we have a gem requirement of a clear gem but marty gets seven more points from that so he's on 12 we do not get rid of the tents though after performing you are free to rearrange your posters so Marty could put this one underneath and get another seven coins, seven points. But I think he's going to be worried about coins next round. So he's going to leave that right there. And that is the end of Marty's perform. Can he do anything with his trainers, though? He's got two left over. Just notice he should have had a coin from the MasterCard. He does have three coins left over. So I think he's going to spend two of them. Yeah, he'll spend two of he'll sp he'll spend one marker and two of his coins to grab himself another poster. So these are the ones that he's got available. He he does have the green the purple L. He could get a big purple, and that would score seven. Yeah, that's quite good, I think, because one of Marty's scoring cards as well is going to be. For every different poster that you have up here, you know, there are different magicians performing, although, you know, the same magician is performing different things and you need different shapes and stuff. The For having four different magicians up here, Marty could score, oh, five, I should say, I do apologise. Marty could score himself the full 20 points of that at some point in a future round. So, yeah, he's going to take that poster. Now we have the end of the round. First of all, we have payment, so you need to work out your highest value colour. Mine is orange or green. I need to pay seven, basically, but I have earned myself a lot of cash, so I've got a lot left over. If you can't pay for your dice, you lose points. In the first round, you lose a point per coin you couldn't spend. In the second round, you lose two points. In the third round, you lose three points, so you really want to be on top of your money. If we'd taken any clear dice, which can be very useful because you can use them as any color, you would also have to pay for those, but we didn't. So Marty's highest color is only five, it's green. So he just needs to pay the five there, but that is almost all of his cash. Next up, the person who is furthest up on the performance track gets to choose a new MasterCard and trainer tile. And so you are thinking about what you want as a bonus in the future in terms of the tile and on the top of the card, but also you're gonna to get to score one of your existing cards or the new card that you take. So Marty's on top, so he's gonna to get to choose first. So scoring orange tiles, no good. Different posters, he's only got two. Trainer uh, tokens, he's got three of those. That would be nine points, but I think he could just score his two tenths and that would be 10 points. It does lose a nice power. But everything else, he hasn't got uh, a great way of scoring it. So let's think in terms of the power and scoring in the future. So this benefit would get you a poster when you, you know, use the, when you put the die on it for a turn. This will let you turn two gems into a trainer token, and then it scores trainer tokens. Oh, Marty likes that. He's getting that, I think. It does mean that, so thinking in terms of the trainer tiles, this would let you spend a trainer tile and then get a point for every completed poster, every performed poster. That could be good as well. Or what about a trainer token and for each one you spend you get plus one. One trainer token gets you plus three, but only on a travel. That's the one he's getting with this. I think that's what he's going for. Yeah, he is going to grab those. So this goes on his space here. 
And this will go in with his cards, but he's going to score one in a minute. Now, only in a two-player game, if there is a space gap in between the people on the performance track, the first player also discards a set. So I am going to have what I take defined for me, basically, I think, to you know encourage you to perform and make sure there isn't a huge gap left between you. But I did leave a gap, so it's going to be Marty getting rid of stuff. Now you can see, I've got four orange tiles. And this boosts orange dice and stuff and lets you score perform posters. Marty's getting rid of that. He does not want me to have that. So what I am getting is the power to get more posters. Not great for me right now because I'm full up. But uh, it, it does give me plus one and I can spend multiple trainer tokens to do that. So not all bad. But yeah, he has gotten rid of the best thing for me. Next up, we need to score and discard a master card. So you are thinking in terms of what's going to get me the most points, but also which benefits am I OK with losing? So I could do this right now. I've only got two. I've got three different magicians, so I can get myself 12 points from getting rid of the card I just got. This lets you do your highest total, which would be seven for me, plus a clear any clear die you took. Dice. But uh, yeah, not, not great. That would just get me seven points. A point for every large piece. I do have four large pieces, so that would be 16 points, almost the maximum. It does get rid of my lovely plus one power, though. This would let me pay for points up to seven times, spend up to seven coins. I do have, I have six coins. So I could buy 18 points with this, but I would kind of like my money for now. Filling up rows, this scores seven points for each, up to three. I think I'm going to be able to do that pretty soon. I think I'm going to score the big pieces card. I don't want to get rid of this, but yes, it has to be scored. So that is going to be four points for every large piece. Four, eight, 12, 16 points, almost the maximum. So there we go. I jump into the lead, but that's uh, going to be short lived, I think, because now we come over to Marty. He's not going to score his trainer markers yet. This is small pieces that he scores. He's only got one different posters. That's just two. Tents is just two as well, so he can either get 10 from the tents. There's no limit to the tents, though. If he saved that to the end, he could get 25 points from that card. And he could just do the posters now for eight and lose the ability to get a clear gem. Yeah, that's what, that's what he's going to do. So he's going to get eight points for this. So that puts him on 20. And his new card can just slot in there. So now we need to slide down our hat and keep the relative order. So I'm going to stay start player. Then we need new cards and tiles for the master area. Let's see what's available here. We've got some orange things. This is copy the ability of another master card. Hmm, that's quite nice. We've got plus two, but just for your performance, we've got get, get a clear gem and double the effect of all bonuses that you get from one tile you place in the build action. Everybody gets their trainer markers back, and then the start player, which is me, has to gather up all of the dice and roll them to start a brand new round. So I think the best way to finish off part one is with a big clumsy one-handed dice roll. There we go. That's what's going to be available for round two. So I'm going to finish this video here. You've seen all of the different actions. If you'd like to stick with the game, though, and see how it plays out, I'm going to go all the way to the end in part two. If you have seen enough and would just like to know what I think, there'll be a link to that coming up on the screen or it's in the description right now if you're particularly impatient today. <laughs> but thank you very much for watching. There are hundreds of playthroughs on this channel. Hopefully you'll find another one that is of interest. If you would like to help me keep making these videos, it's only possible thanks to the support of my patrons. It's patreon.com slash slickerdrips. Thank you very much for watching, though, and I'll see you wherever you end up. Bye. <laughs>